Hello, beautiful people. It is Sexy Saturday, and you know we talk about our issues on the topics of love, sex, and relationships. And I have a very delicious guest today because right now, Nisi Nash, Andrew Gilliam, the whole sexual fluidity, bisexuality is front page news, basically. I've invited a very special guest. His name is Franco Stevens, and he identifies as sexually fluid. And I wanted to hear his story, because you know, I'm very nosy, very curious. I love to talk about love, sex, relationships. So I have a lot of questions for him, but I am going to allow him to just tell his story. And we're going to kind of dip into the Nisi Nash and the Andrew Gilliam situation as well. I wanna get his perspective on that. So I say grab yourself a cocktail, pull up a chair, come with an open mind, put your defenses down, and come in for this grown and sexy conversation. So let's get started. Woo, what a good <laughs> intro, I like it. I like it already. <laughs> so you are, okay, first of all, I just want to say thank you for answering the call and being able to be open because a lot of people are just not, it's not that they're not open, they're just very private, which I can understand because that's my big thing too. It doesn't, we shouldn't really care about who's in other people's bed if they're not going to be in our bed. We should only worry about our bed, but it is what it is. We're all human. We all judge. And a lot of people are just kind of afraid to talk about this situation out of fear. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is, how did you get to a point where you are free to even talk about this puppet? You know, I think it was, I, I want to say maybe a year into figuring out, you know, what I prefer, what I prefer, or, you know, what my preference is. Um, but that being said, you know, growing up uh, from age, like, I don't know, since I can only remember, I've only had women as romantic partners, sexual partners, and then I, I want to say, so I'm going to be 30 this year. So seven years ago, probably when I was 21, right on the scene of being able to go out to the clubs and the bars, there was just one guy that kind of caught my eye and I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So for some people that are from the East Coast, they consider it a little bit of um, a blue collar steel town and a little bit more conservative than, you know, LA or New York. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and so I didn't really ever come across anybody. I mean, I know that there were like two gay males in my high school. I had a graduating class of about 300 kids and they were very sweet and nice, but I was just, I was never attracted. I never found guys really attractive in my head. I always was gravitating towards you know, the Blake Lively or the Eva Longoria or you, I just, I had this like array of women that I was so infatuated with and I was voted biggest flirt in high school as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's not very shocking whenever people might say, oh, well, you know, Franco flirts with everybody. So I'm not really shocked that he's identifying as fluid or bisexual um, whatever you prefer, but I, I think it has something to do with just my personality and I'm not limiting myself to anything, even when it comes to a career. I didn't want to limit myself to corporate America, so I did that for two years and then peaced out. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this, with all of the identities, LGBTQP, do you feel Back in the day, we used to have a thing we used to say about bisexual people. We used to say they were greedy people. We used to be like, oh, they just greedy. They just, they so fine or they so sexy. They just, they can't get enough. They can have the men and the women. So they just greedy. We used to say, that used to be our fun, you know, greedy people. 
So yeah. do you consider bisexuality and sexually fluid the same? And and I'll let you answer that first. I would I'm I'm really not that knowledgeable on the different terminologies, even though I should be as I identify with the LGBTQ community. I guess I would say fluidity sounds like it's a category in bisexual or in pansexual. So I think it's part of those two groups, fluidity or being fluid. I would say if you're fluid, then you're either bisexual or you're pansexual. That's, that's what I understand and that's how I perceive it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's interesting because I always said, I know we have to have labels in this world because we just have to have labels. It helps us to just get along, I guess, and to identify things. But I used to always make a joke and I still say this, that had it not been for society and rules and the Bibles, I think all of us would be quote unquote bisexual. It wouldn't be called bisexual. It would just be, we would just love who we love and we would just be the way we want. You know, one day we'll be introducing our girlfriend, the next day we might introduce our boyfriend. But we yeah. have to have, you know, um, I guess some form of control over our sexual behaviors because unfortunately there are some sexual behaviors that can be very harmful to people. You know, there's people who can't help that they are attracted to kids, pedophiles. Yeah. You yeah. know, there are people who are attracted to animals, bestiality. Right. You know, and so there's people who are even attracted to objects, <laughs> yeah. you know, so it's like, and then, you know, people want to throw in the Bible and it's like, there's a lot of things that we just don't understand. And my thing is this, we, it's easier to judge when you don't understand something. So it's easy to judge bestiality for me. It's easy to judge uh, pedophiles for me because it just seems like you're harming, you know, um, right. unwanted, you know, participant. So mm -hmm. it's easier to judge that. But I say we should really stop judging when it just comes to love. Like, let's let everybody just love whoever they want to love and let's concentrate and focus more on what we're doing because the other thing I was saying in a video uh, a couple of weeks ago there's a lot of things that straight people do that can be judged. You know, this whole, the whole thing that I don't like about the categories is if you're heterosexual, you're better than quote unquote homosexuality because homosexuality is against God or they do, right. you know, they try to demonize the sexual acts. When you have heterosexuals who are doing some stuff, you know, I mean, golden showers. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people want to be peed on, and I'm just like, <laughs> so is God going, you know, what's God going to do about that? Okay, yeah, you have right. a sexual, but, and you may be married, but you like to be peed on. I mean, everything <laughs> that we do can be judged, so. Absolutely, and I mean, you're never going to lose that. That's always going to be a thing. Yeah, so recently, Niecy Nash, she announced that she is, not gay or she was not on the DL, she is sexually fluid. So I don't know if you know who Nisi Nash is, but she is uh, an African-American actress. Um, she's really famous for Reno 911, I think it was called. Yes, yes. Uh, and you know who you're talking about. Yeah, so she's really big now with her series called Claws. So okay. this is her third marriage. Mm -hmm. And this time it's to a woman. And, you know, she surprised everybody by just showing the wedding pictures. And that's how everyone yeah. found out. So it was just like, what, what? You know, <laughs> so that was kind of crazy. And then uh, recently, Andrew Gilliam, the, uh, he was running for governor in Florida. He was interviewed mm -hmm. on Tamron. And he identified himself, himself as sexually fluid. And right. that's kind of big because one, he's a black man. So yeah. that's like, wait a minute, you know, in politics, right. Florida, of all places, okay, mm -hmm. and married with children. 
And, you know, he said this. Now, he doesn't identify himself with gay. Neither does Niecy Nash. So right. what are your thoughts on those, on those two situations? I would love to be in a position like Nash because I dated girls all my life. And I didn't ever feel like if somebody was to ask me in my family, I would tell them, yeah, I'm bisexual. I'm into both. But I don't really like to advertise it because it's just not something that it's not that I'm trying to hide it. It just doesn't define who I am mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, a personality and I'm, you know, somebody in entertainment or somebody in, you know, engineering. It's like it, those are the things that maybe identify me as my career and my personality. And I don't think of sexual orientation as something that should identify somebody whenever somebody says, oh, well, my gay friend, I want you, and I want to introduce you to my gay friend or my black friend. I'm, I'm always a little bit reluctant to tell them, hey, you don't need to say that in the beginning of the introduction. Right. I, think I never thought that that was appropriate. Mm -hmm. But maybe because that's because I am part of the, this community. Or, I mean, it's uh, honestly, it's, I think maybe they're doing that because they're trying to set up the judgment, the less judgment, like, mm -hmm. let me get the first hurdle out of the way because right. the person is going to probably judge. Like, if I don't warn them that this person is gay, how would they react? Or if I don't warn them I... that my friend is Black, how would they react? Because maybe they might fear that they're introducing them to someone who may be very judgmental. Yeah. So now with the way you said you wish it was like Niecy Nash because she just, she just, she Put the pictures out. herself at w wedding pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like that because I have been married and I was the type of person that never really came out in a way of like hey just so you know i'm making an announcement it was just like people would follow me on social media and see that there was you know romantic pictures with like a certain guy and so they just kind of said oh well we might have always thought that but now it seems <laughs> to be it's official <laughs> you know <laughs> so you were married to a man yeah, yeah, it was. And it was, uh, you know, about five years. Um, it was one of my best friends from university. And we were, you know, in love, obviously. And then it just, it, it didn't work out. It's, it's, we're still close in a way. But um, yeah, I guess like, it was just something that I never really felt like I had to announce it was just it was something that people would see photos and they would assume and they if, if they asked me obviously I wouldn't um deny or you know feel uncomfortable right <laughs> it's I mean because really it's none of their business now mm -hmm. with the um Andrew Gilliam story what I really liked about his story is when the wife was introduced and she knew before mm -hmm. they got married and they decided together that it was nobody's business. And yeah. I was shocked to, to hear that because when the scandal came out, you know, he was seen, you know, uh, he was seen face down in vomit, naked with par apparently two other men. Mm -hmm. And that was the scandal of it all. He, he claims he doesn't remember what happened. He was drinking. Uh, you know, he admits that he was an alcoholic, but when the wife revealed that she knew he was bisexual because they talked about it before, you know, they got married when they were dating, I just was like, that is really, that's really cool because you should, to me, that's what marriage should be about. It should be about what the relationship is going to be for those two people, not for what society says. And right. I think a lot of people unfortunately get married for society and yeah. what they think marriage is and they forget that it's just really them too and they just need to come up with what works for them so with you how is it that because you're very handsome okay if I was to see you at the bar, you're so sweet. <laughs> me, at the bar me and my girls would be like mm, we would definitely be coming your way we would 
I would never suspect that you were bisexual. I would never suspect that you were into guys. You look just like a sexy, straight male that most women would want to pounce on, okay? So how does it, how does the conversation come up when women come to you and they approach you? Is it immediate or, you know, just give us a little bit about your journey, how you got here. Well, first off, thank you so much for the compliment. I appreciate you and you are so beautiful as well. I think that the one thing that really um, me happy is I am greedy and I obviously do love to have, you know, my cake and eat it too. And I do find myself more attracted physically to women and I don't know why, but then maybe romantically and mentally men. So I think it's always, you know, it goes in and out. It's never one clear cut uh, attraction level. But when I am, I am a little nervous, but when I work at, I worked at this bar and it was a gay bar in LA and I would meet women there and you know, we would exchange numbers and it was one of those situations where I felt like that was an easy environment to be open and honest because they're obviously coming into a gay bar with their gay friends. And when I'm bartending, they're open-minded or maybe they, they just have that idea like, oh, if he works here, then he must be either a fluid or gay or bisexual or pansexual when women come up to you and assume that you're straight is this a conversation right away do you tell people right away how does that work for you in your relationships i've never been somebody that would announce it or maybe bring it up because I think I've never felt like I needed to. And if it was a question, I would answer it honestly. But you're right. I mean, I would say eight times out of 10, it seems that it doesn't get brought up until maybe later on in the evening. Or maybe if they kind of are wondering, oh, well, you have a lot of uh, gay friends or <laughs> or, if, if maybe, or maybe you're, you're dressed really well, even though it might still be masculine, it's pretty, pretty fashionable, I'd like to say. Um, so they're always like, oh, maybe, maybe he is a little bit questionable. Let's ask. And so then I will be open. Honestly, I'll just be upfront and say, yeah, I'm into both. That's, that's usually my line. I'm like, yeah, I'm into both. <laughs> now, there was an uh, episode on Insecure. I don't know if you watched that. That's on HBO. And uh, there was an episode where this couple were sharing dirty, you know, secrets. And they were, you know, just sharing. And so she shared that in college, she had a sexual experience with a female. And they laughed and it was cute and that. And then when the guy shared that he had the same thing, it was over for her. She did not appreciate that he had a sexual experience with a guy. She started tripping. So let's talk about the double standards, okay? But one thing with Nisi Nash, um, when I read more about sexual you know, fluidity, that more women identify with this than men. And mm -hmm. I see that even with like a Cardi B and her husband, who's soon to be her ex-husband, Right. It's okay for her to be bisexual and, you know, play at the strip club with the girls and kiss on them and touch on them or whatever. And it's okay. But if he cheats, it's like horribly wrong. So why is it such a double standard that women can be fluid and maybe even be married and, you know, bring home a, a, a lover, a female lover and a threesome happens and everything's okay. But if a straight man tries to bring in a threesome with a guy, all hell breaks loose. He's gay. He's is no. It's, it's like Nisi Nash can say she's not gay. She's just sexually fluid, and it's okay. But a guy, it seems like they just want to make you gay regardless. Is that do you find that that's true? 
it is really true and i've also gave i gave up trying to explain myself to some of my gay friends that really don't believe in it or they might just think since i I'm such a flamboyant personality. They're like, oh, girl, you gay. Like, they'll, just, <laughs> they'll say that. And I don't get offended. I've never got offended because maybe when I was younger, when I was still trying to figure myself out in high school. Even in the LGBT community, there's a lot of gay people who think bisexuality is confusion. They're like, just pick a team, pick a side. Yeah. A lot of gay people who don't, who don't rally for bisexuality. Right. And that's kind of why I have been not the biggest cheerleader because I would love to be a big advocate on the B, the letter B, bisexuality. That's something I'm very passionate about because I do feel it can be rare because there is a transition stage where some people, they start out as bisexual and it makes sense. It, it, it only makes sense it's natural if you are trying to figure yourself out. I just figured myself out and it's stuck on this letter. Right. It's stuck in this zone. And <clears throat> I'm not going to argue with somebody that doesn't really believe me because I'm like, Hey, like, okay, whatever you think you want to, you want to label me as G as gay, then I'm cool with it. I'm totally fine with that. Now, if you really want to know who I am, that's not who I am. And I don't, I'm not like trying to hide that. Right. Mm -hmm. But now that I figured out my sexual orientation as bisexual, I am, I'm way more, I'm way more comfortable just being like, yep, whatever you want to label me as. If you want to have a deep conversation and like really find out what I'm about, I'll explain it. And, um, touching on the, the, the double standard. Yes, absolutely. That's something that I've always just kind of been like, that it is what it is. And I think it has something to do with your masculinity is taken away when you are with a guy. But for a woman, her femininity, uh, if that's, if that's the right word I'm trying to use, her, you know, being with another woman isn't taken as seriously because Sometimes these girls that they do, I've even talked to my girlfriend like from years ago, she identifies as bisexual as well. And she says, you know, I really, at the end of the day, do need a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's like this, maybe there's this idea that I, I think it's women is not taken as seriously, not to underestimate or downplay that there are true bisexual women that you know, we'll go back. Like you said, Nisi Nash is now married to a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is serious. It's, it's like a serious relationship. It's not a phase. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, some of the men, some of the men are coming and she'll be back, you know, she'll miss the D she'll be back. Uh -huh. Now you, you said something, you said when a man is with a man, he loses his masculinity. Why is that? Is that, is that true? Or is that what we believe is true? That is, I obviously disagree with that, but the two girls that I dated that were, you know, they already knew me as a married man to a man. And then when that ended, they had no like care in the world. But I will say, I think that they were reluctant to take me seriously as, um, uh, bisexual interested in women because they thought that oh, I'm just going through a phase or yeah. you know, you're gonna leave me for a guy and that's not my mentality but I can't you know I can't convince somebody if they're already their mindset is set and and also you have to think about this like I put myself in their shoes I put myself in a woman that I'm dating's shoes if they are straight, if they identify as a straight female, I'm like, wouldn't that be difficult to be like introducing your boyfriend or your husband to your family? And even if they are open-minded and liberal, it seems that it would be just hard. I think it would be hard. And I don't know why it's 
just the society mindset because it is more socially acceptable where women will have a will have a you know one night stand with a female or experiment in college and then as soon as a male does it we are just kind of like oh no that that's yeah that's not okay, yeah. That's not yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah like that that he it's okay but he can't like be taken seriously as a male interested in female mm. and i was going to ask you too when you said your girlfriends and you said they were bisexual, I kind of assumed that. So I was going to say, have you ever dated a straight woman? And how did that work out? Like, when she, yep. did oh. she tell you she was straight? I mean, when did you guys have the conversation? You know, I think it was something that she had said she never had been with a female. And it's not necessarily she outrolled it, but she was like, I, you know, not really interested, but I'm not going to outroll it or I'm never going to say never. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and that meaning, so it, it was a little bit difficult, but I think if, you know, when the chemistry is right, and I think sometimes when people are just like, they don't care about judgment, mm -hmm. that's when it works. It really does. Like it works because I mean, I'm a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like I was telling you before, you're greedy. <laughs> I am so greedy, and I and I mean, uh, just to kind of touch on that, my dad, who's pretty um, masculine, fifty nine year old white male from mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. he just said to me whenever I kind of came out to him, he said, "Oh, I get it. You're a selfish bastard. You just want it all." <laughs> That's what we used and that to. was the best response I could ever hope for. <laughs> that, and when you were saying earlier about uh, it, introducing you to the family, now, why would that even come up? Is it because you may have feminine ways? I mean, because at the end of the day, if you introduce, this is so unfair, right? When you're yeah. heterosexual and you bring your lover to your parents, right. there is no have to, right. be to yeah. reveal any sexuality it's just hey this is who i'm engaged to or hey this is who i'm dating mom dad this is x y and z so why is it that when the person is bisexual why does it have to change yeah i totally agree with you and thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> I'm, curious. I think I'm curious as to why you know you said yeah. I guess, to be perfectly honest, it doesn't have to be brought up. Um, it's just unfortunate that, I mean, it's fortunate that I had a great marriage where, where it lasted. I think if it was just relationships with men in the past, previous male relationships that I had, it might not really need to come up. But the fact that I was married might you know, that's a serious commitment. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean more just really specific to you because yeah. eventually it would come out, oh, he was married before he was. Yeah, well, how did that go? How was your wife? And you was like, oh, my husband. And then you have to go into it. I yes. Oh. Yes. And, and I definitely, you know, I like to share that part of my life because I do think I can give a lot of insight to people that, you know, maybe are younger and are going through those difficult decisions and those difficult, you know, adjustments of marriage at a young age, you know, or just dating your first, you know, male, or if you're a female, dating your first female, you know, those, those difficult, like, um, milestones that we go through as, you know, bisexuals or, you know, gay or lesbian. Right. Now tell me your journey. How did you how did you figure this out? You know, it took me one bartender to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> this is an interesting story. I should have had a drink today. <laughs> I mean, I just always thought there were guys that were attractive. Mm 